In this tutorial, we will go over how to simulate porous media in OpenFoam, such as this simulation. Um, to follow along, please download the files from the um, description below. Once you download the files, you should see something like this. If you open it, you should see porous block one. Let's start by running the simulation. So copy it to wherever you would like to run it. And then make a, another copy for running it so you don't lose any information when you run it. Open Ubuntu and go to your wherever you saved it. In this case, CD porous, and then porous block one, and then over the run merge. To run the simulation, type in block mesh. So we make the block, then we got to specify which portion of our mesh is porous. So do this, type in topo set, hit run. And then run the simulation by entering in foam run. Simulation will take a minute. All right, once it's done, type in parafoam. And let's view it in paraview. Now, make sure to check porous block zone so you that way you can view your porous zone and this is the yellow is porous to view the results go to velocity no. you can see the porous zone is slowing down the fluid and even eventually get some vortex shedding off the back so now that you know how to run a porous simulation, let's go look at the files that make this happen. So let's go back and copy porous block one, rename it porous block two. Most of these files are the same as in any other simulation and don't affect the porous zone. The three files that affect the porous zone are FV models and coordinate systems under constant and topo set dict under systems. Let's start by going to constant and open up FD models and coordinate systems. Searching at FD models, this um, has the porous zones properties, which are basically just two constants, D and F. But to learn what these constants do, I'd recommend you go and look at under the helpful links folder in the folders you should download at the beginning and click on the Darcy for timer model link. I can read through all of this, but basically those two coefficients come from the source term so, um, source term SM. They are these this capital D and this capital F right here. So in this case F is set to zero and D is so 1000. The higher D is, the more the pore zone prohibits fluid flow, while a value of zero would allow the fluid to freely flow through the pore zone. Um, you also notice that there's a coordinate system down here. You could specify the coordinate system in the FD models file. In this case, I put it under this coordinate systems file. See, to this note, you have to have the name pores block should match this. And then you have an origin, 0, 0, 0. And then these two um, values, E1 and E2. These are unit vectors in the direction of these values. E1 points um, specifies the direction for the first term in the D for D and F, while E2 specifies the second term. In this case, the first term is in the X direction, and the second term is in the Y direction, and the third term will be in the z direction perpendicular to the other two. So um, to see the, the um, what happens if you change this, I recommend you change this to 
value of 100 and rerun the simulation. After you run the simulation, you should get something like this with a higher velocity behind the forest zone and no more vortex shedding. So let's go and look and see how you specify the shape and location of the port zone. So make a copy of porous block one, rename it porous block three. Go to system and open topo set dip. This file does two things. First, it creates a cell set. It name, you need a, na a name, porous block cell set in this case. Type, we we'll make a cell set, so cell set. Actually, new, it's a new cell set, and we're using box to cell to select the cells. It basically makes a box, in this case from 0 to 2 in the x direction, minus 0 0.5 to 0.5 in the y direction, negative 1 to 1 in the z direction. And all the cells with their center in that box are added to the cell set. Now, the cell set is converted to a cell zone called porous block down here. Now if we wanted to, what we have to do is change the shape or location of this box, change these numbers. Let's make this a 1 and this a 3. This will make, uh, move the box up and make it into a square up against the top wall. Let's put a note that these can extend outside of your mesh, such as in the X direction. It won't affect the results at all. Right, let's run this, and you should get something like this. If you show the porous zone, see now our porous block is up at the top and is now a square. Show you. See, you get entirely different results now, and you get an interesting simulation. Now, if your simulation does not look like this one, um, I would recommend you go to um, back to the Porsche tutorial files, extra topo set files, and make sure yours matches this one here under porous edge block. I also recommend if you have time to look under porous cylinder. In this case, I am specify cylinder using cylinder to cell. Do a similar thing. So I won't go over that there, but I recommend you look at it. Also, command you read under helpful links the topo set options. If you go in here, you can see many different ways to select cells, such as box or cell, like we did first, cylinder cell, like I did in the cylinder example that I recommend you look at, and surface to cell if you want to use an STL set to go over your. If you want to use STL to define your porous zone, as we'll go over now. So and look at how to use an STL to specify the porous zone. Go to here, let's make a fourth copy. Porous block four. And go to topo set day. Here. You do that anymore. And instead of box to cell, we will do surface to cell. I need a file for file. Um, go to the tool them and copy the geometry folder to your constant folder. Um, the poor shape is this one. This will go across the fluid like this, forcing motion fluid to flow through the middle where it's thinner and slowing down the fluid flow on the edges. So this will be under constant geometry pore shape. Constant geometry 
porous shape dot stl. Now note the lowercase stl. OpenFoam only allows lowercase stl, and it's case sensitive. So go to your geometry properties. Properties, details, and make sure it's porous shape dot stl dot lowercase stl. So open form can find it. And then we want if you go here you can see we'll need to specify the outside points. So yes. Out sign points. Now these outside points are specify the outside of the outside of the pore zone. So as you can see, the mesh will be cut into two portions by this pore zone: a left side and a right side. So we'll need a point on each side for our left point. Let's use negative two zero zero. For a right point six zero zero. Now what I need is cut inside and outside. So include cut. That can be set to true. This will include all the cells that are cut by our surface. And then include inside. This will also be set to true. This will include um, all the cells inside our surface. And then include outside. We want to be set to false. We uh, don't want to include all the cells outside our surface in the num cell set. So now we need near distance. This um, specifies um, if we should include cells within a certain distance from the surface. In this case, we don't want to, so we'll set that to zero. And then curvature. This is a scalar that includes cells close to strong curvature on the surface. Curvature defined as difference in surface normal and nearest point on surface for each vortex of cell. In this case, we will just set this to 100. So this should create the pore zone in the shape of our STL image. So now let's go and run that. You should get a pore zone like this. It's pretty rough, but if you decrease the mesh size under block mesh stick, you should get better results at the cost of longer computational time. Let's run that. You can see we get most of the fluid it comes through in the center where it's going faster, or it slows down out towards the edges where the pore zone gets thicker. So that's how to um, simulate porous media in OpenFoam. I uh, hope you find that helpful.